On October 16th, 2018, a mysterious cryptic video was posted onto the Instagram account at TCBAP. The video had no context and a caption that simply read, Get ready. Uh, I know it This video had multiple little things hidden in it, but the most obvious being a series of random numbers followed by the letters KMR. When applying a numerical value to each letter, KMR translated into 11, 13, 18, seemingly signifying a date. The second thing the video gave us was an incomprehensible message, which when played backwards, turned into a phrase. Join the hunt. The following day, October 17th, 2018, another mysterious video was posted. This one showed a creepy looking room with a music video playing on the TV in slow motion. Right when the video cut out, a clip of the song was played at full speed, and the message could be heard. Treasure. Treasure. For the few people who followed the page and were paying enough attention, these messages started to make sense. A treasure hunt. That's all the information they got, though. Until the following day. October 18th, 2018. The account switched things up a bit this day by posting a strange image that clearly was part of a QR code. Only after nine days of waiting, people were able to look at the account page and use someone else's phone to scan the QR code, which led them to a website. This website explained the purpose of the hunt as well as claiming that the winner would receive prizes that were valued at over $500. This spurred some excitement as people waited for that day to come. KMR, the 13th of November, 2018. That's when the first clue started. Much like the QR code, the first clue came out in nine parts. These cryptic images drew a decent bit of attention, but by the time the sixth image was dropped, the one with the most significance, four guys stepped up to the plate. What followed was the unpredictable, mind-bending, friendship-ruining adventure that these guys had been waiting for. So the day was November 14th, 2018. I was in John slash Tyler's office at the church. It was a day after school. I just come up here, I was hanging out. And Tyler tells me about these cryptic posts that have been made on an Instagram. And he says that it's all leading up to a treasure hunt and that he thinks I should join. And at first I was apprehensive because I have work, I have school, but I thought, you know, I'll do it on the side, it'll be fun. What I didn't know is that my entire life for the next couple of weeks would be wrapped around this treasure hunt and solving it and doing whatever it took. It all started at church Sunday morning whenever Dylan and Connor were talking about the treasure hunt. And me and Jacob, we were going back to Conway and stuff. We were like, you know, there's no way we would solve it. John and Tyler were always like, this is gonna take till Christmas break. We were like, we're at such a disadvantage. So I was already at a disadvantage because of the team up between Cole, Jacob, and Dylan. I didn't actually plan on participating. I just kind of was forced to ride along with uh, Cole and Dylan to go find it. And um, after that, I kind of got hooked. Not only that, but Dylan is an ASU student, and the first clue led to a building on ASU campus, which is all, you know, I'm at a disadvantage there. However, I was able to figure out that it was Edge Coffee House. I went there, and I found the first clue. It was a phone number. So we found the first clue, called the number. A voice, Tyler, answers and says, Password. And I was like, Union. And he said, Incorrect. Hung up. So we called back. 
and he said password and I was like edge Incorrect. hung up about 40 minutes later uh, the clue goes out for the password whenever we call the phone number we saw the next post and it said you need to know two things you need to know the truth in all caps and Latin which is italicized easy money just truth in Latin uh, it turned out that the password was actually veritas, which is Latin for truth. I figured that out quite quickly, and anytime I say something like that, I don't mean to gloat, although I very much so do. Connor gets a text five minutes before us, and it's a picture of a phone screen, and it says, take note. And we get the same message, and we were sitting there brain processing, and then we were like, wait a second. This makes no sense whatsoever. It drove me insane because it was it, it was the new iPhone, the new iPhone XS, and I, I was reading too much into it. I was literally like wanting to like die just trying to figure this clue out. So we spent hours and hours on this one thing, and we were just like, "What could this be?" Me, I think Connor said it multiple times. We're like. Maybe it's a new phone, like take note, maybe it's in the notes at like Best Buy or something. And then Jacob was like, no, they wiped the phones, so there couldn't be anything up from Best Buy. I was like, okay, I'm gonna sneak away and just see how long it takes for them to notice. So I went outside with the dogs out back, jumped my fence, drove backwards away, and I was gone. It wasn't until I was already past Best Buy and leaving to go to the next clue before they realized where I was. So I went to where the clue said it was in the notes at Best Buy and it had a YouTube video that explained some stuff. If you're watching this, you're about to learn our code phrase. It's sort of greeting, formal introduction that you give in order to see if someone else is one of us or is not. I thought it was supposed to rain today. You can't trust the weathermen, especially in Arkansas. Pay attention. And make sure they say the phrase exactly as we have told you to. That way you know who you can trust and they know who they can trust. Along with that video, a clue in the notes section of the phone read, You must know our logo. You've seen it by now. Your next clue is coming. Don't have a cow. The location of the clue is as bad as can be. Go order yourself a burrito and then you will see. I know it costs money, but don't put up a fuss. When you pay, look to your left and we promise you'll see us. I went to go to be a burrito and it was closed. So I was like, just meet me at the church. I'll explain everything. I'll give you all the clues, stuff like that. Since we were working together at this point. Then Connor calls and he's like, hey bro, so I gotta go to this family thing, I'm meeting up with my parents, and I don't think I can go get the clue, can't figure it out. And I was like, I guess I will be a better person, and I guess, you know, since I'm such that great person, pretty humble, I'll help him. His one condition that he got telling me that the next clue led to Best Buy was that I come to the church and help with the chili supper, and he would tell me once I came to the church. However, in efforts to get a one step ahead, uh, over my contenders, I lied to him, and I said that I could not make it to the church. Uh, do I regret lying to him? A little bit. Not really, though. I mean, let's be honest, I was just going to play them until the very end and then just ditch them. Uh, sorry. About 30 minutes after we at church, who walks in the door? Connor. Upon my arrival, uh, Cole, Jacob, and Dylan all looked very hurt, and I apologized profusely that night, and I do apologize now. So then after Cole found that, um, we had to actually go back to Conway for school. That night we head back, you know, everything's whatever. You know. Connor and I are on weird terms for this treasure hunt. But at this point I was kind of a double agent. And I realized that either way, no matter who won, I was getting a kayak. Because at this point we were the only ones in the, in the hunt. So I thought, I, I, I don't have any reason to be mad at Connor now. Because if he wins, I'm still getting a kayak. We hugged on it, so I knew he was being for real. That night, whenever I did go to BA, I saw that the next morning they would be opening at 11 o'clock on the dot. I go there, sadly, to see that Dylan has beat me there. Um, however, I did, not lose, I did not lose hope because I knew that neither of us could get into BA Burrito until it opened at 11 a.m. anyway, so we were both on level playing fields. So as I'm waiting outside, talking to Dylan, subtly bragging about, you know, how I'm going to win, um, 
we see this car pull up, and it turns out it's Tyler Morgan. We're both very confused. What what is he doing here? And we walk up to the car, and he greets us with I don't know, with a hello. I greet him with the formal introduction. You know, I thought it was going to rain today, and he replied with the uh, with the correct passphrase. So therefore, I knew that he was a part of this hunt in some form or fashion. Tyler then proceeded to tell us that the creators of this hunt had not yet set up the next clue at Via Burrito because they, they did not expect us to be there waiting for it. So he handed us two business cards that he said we would have found in the, in the restaurant. The clue read uh, something along the lines of Frozen in Time, a, a Warrior Holds the Line, Path of a Fallen Hero, Historic Battle of Jonesboro, followed by a bunch of numbers, which was then also followed by Give Him a Formal Introduction. Tyler, this doesn't make freaking sense, dude! Dylan and I both arrived at the courthouse around 11.15, and we both sat there with each other until almost 1 o'clock in the afternoon, racking our minds as to what the heck this could be. So Dylan sends it to me in, in Conway, and I went to my first class. I only went to like one and a half of my five classes, but don't tell them all. And I was just sitting there reading this, like, what does this mean? You know, I was looking up stuff, wasn't paying attention. Get out, can't figure it out. I'm like, okay, we'll look around. Nothing. As I began to decipher this, and I saw that it was multiple groups of three numbers each, I immediately recognized it as a book cipher, and I knew that it read as, you know, line, word, and letter in that word. However, I was very distracted by these certain memorial bricks that were laid in the ground because their uh, location numbers follow the same pattern on a grid, you know, section, row, and brick number the same as a book cipher. I was distracted by those bricks for probably two hours. So, it's before we go home, we don't have anything. I even said someone out there later that night when Dylan was working, they couldn't find anything. Because I thought we would find something to help decipher words. I did leave uh, for a few hours just to go hang out at my house and you know cool down and possibly get a fresh new set of eyes before work. And I was sitting there around three o'clock. I had to be into work at five and I realized there's no, there's no point in me just sitting here. I might as well go out there and try and see what I can find. So I pull up at the courthouse. I park right smack dab in the front. And again, I start looking at these stupid bricks. After about a half an hour, I sit down back in my car. You know, I was very frustrated at this point. I was cold. And I thought I was done with this whole treasure hunt thing just because I couldn't figure out this one clue. And as I was looking at the business card, I really focused on a historic battle of Jonesboro, that one darn line. And I happened to look over to my left, and right at eye level in front of me was a plaque that read the Battle of Jonesboro, followed by a paragraph. From inside my car, I counted the lines in the paragraph, and it went up to nine lines. I then checked the clue, and the highest number on the clue was nine. I was very astounded as to how I possibly could have by chance noticed this. But I also felt like Nicolas Cage. I'm gonna steal the Declaration of Independence. So I hopped out of my car, I went and I deciphered it using what I knew was a book cipher all along. It translated into Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones, and instantly I recognized that as the two main guys in the movies, Men in Black, that whole series. I knew that we had a, uh, a suit shop here in town known as Men in Black, and I went there only 30 minutes before I had to be into work. Okay, let me, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so I know that you're friends uh, with Temple Baptist Church. Um, okay. I'm doing, you know, I don't know how much you know about a treasure hunt going on, but I have a clue that okay. I got at the courthouse that led me here, and I think I'm supposed to say something like, I, I thought it was going to rain today. Well, you never can trust those weathermen. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um... I mean, I would help you out, but I don't know what else to tell you. Um, there's no way that <laughs> there's no way that it doesn't leave me here. Well, this is really awkward now because. <laughs> However, after a moment, I remembered that it was possible for them to say the catchphrase wrong in order to trip us up. I, I, I thought it was going to rain today. Never can trust those weathermen. Uh, you never can trust the weathermen, especially in Arkansas. I have not felt any more joy, I think, than when he said, You want to try my jacket? Yeah, of course. Yes. Uh, he brought me to the back of the store, and he proceeded to throw a blazer on me. I reached inside the pocket, the inside pocket, 
and I found another business card. However, there was no logo, there was no text, only a black light bulb. At this point, I was, I want to say stuck, but I knew in my heart of hearts that it had to be a black light. After work, I went home and I looked up how to create your own black light. Um, and I created a black light using my phone, or a, a more of a UV light, not an actual black light, with uh, blue and purple Sharpies and tape over my phone flashlight. Um, it did not work, nothing showed up on the card, and so I thought, okay, maybe I need a stronger actual black light. I went up to the bowling alley after it was closed, mind you. This was 10.30 at night, I believe on a Monday evening. Um, for some reason, they had the doors unlocked. I walked right in and I said, hey, I know this is weird, but is there any way that we could get the black lights flipped on? I promise I'm not trying to bowl. I know you guys are closed. I was like, I just, I had this clue here for this treasure hunt and they were all immediately intrigued. Every single one of them, their interest was piqued. And um, so one guy stepped forward. He said, yeah, follow me. I'll take you to the laser tag. We walk into the laser tag. I hold the card up to the black lights. And again, nothing shows up. And so I start thinking, Maybe it's not a black light. Maybe it has something to do, you know, with the uh, the light bulb uh, logo in Monopoly. You know, maybe it's the electric company. So I went to Tech Electric and City Water and Light in Jonesboro, and I said the passphrase on one of the sunniest days we've had in weeks, mind you. These people looked at me like I was crazy, literally like I was insane, because I said I thought it was going to rain today, and then uh, the, the lady at uh, City Water and Light even responded with. Why would you think that? It's the prettiest outside it's been in a while. And I said, you know, I don't know why I would think that. You have a nice day. And I walked out. Will Smith, Tommy Lee Jones, which means men in black. So I go to call Seth Southern, and he's like, I say the phrase, he replies, then he's like, I said, so can I get something? He said, I can't give anything in my house. Next day, I went up there, tried on a 40 length blazer. Inside was a little, little piece of paper with a black light on it. And I was sitting there, I was like, oh, instantly black light. So I knew that there was some at the church. Came up to the church, put it up to a black light, and it said, text me contrast. So I texted the number contrast. Next, I said, there is your clue, popped up, and then nothing. And I was like, what? And I just started clicking around. It's supposed to look like there's no picture, but there's a picture. And it said, morganproductions.co slash bookings. So I went to the site, booked an appointment at one o'clock in the dark room for five minutes. So at this point, I was like, okay. So I went home, did some stuff, you know, hung around. Got home, Connor calls me. And he's like, bro, I've been stuck on this black light thing for a couple of days and I don't know what to do. Can you just like hold up or something? So I was like, I guess I'll help him again. So <clears throat> I was like, okay, here. I helped him through the black light. I said, okay, you're doing it wrong. Go to the church, there's black lights there. Nice again. He said, oh, thank you so much, you know, whatever, whatever. And I was like, you're welcome. I get to the church. Turns out he had scheduled scheduled appointment so long after me. When I booked my appointment and I came in at around one to the dark room at 2834 Ray Street, which is Temple Baptist Church, I was astounded, stuck, and confused once again. I go in the room for five minutes, walk in, iPad, binary code, so long. Which I know how to read binary to some degree, just don't know how to translate it. So I was sitting there, tried to, first try, I tried to write it in my arm with my nail. That didn't work in one bit. So Connor goes in there. When I walked into the dark room, there was nothing but a screen with binary on it. I would like to credit Brian Mahan at Nettleton High School for teaching me how to decode binary both numerically and alphabetically because I was able to decipher the first three words of this binary code. As I was walking out, I just picked up a black light Put set it down, thought about it more. So next time I go in there, Tyler lets us go in there one more time. I go and put the black light against the wall, and it says, Tell me Konami. Now sitting there, I was like, I know what this is, I've heard this before, I just can't think of it. And I was just completely like mind fart, crazy. Called Jacob, and he was like, It's 
it's a you know it's a game brand you know it's a game company they make stuff and there's a Konami code and it's up up down down left right left right BA start so I was like okay great I did not want to wait another day and I said here Tyler let's make a bargain both me and Connor get one more shot for one minute go in there say it wrong three times twice I meant actually switch A and B twice then I got it right on the third try changes the slide and it says Temple Baptist Church it's a sign. So then I'm like, God, Connor had no idea about the black light, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna clear. And that's when Tyler told me that my time was up and I needed to leave the dark room. As I was walking out the door, I noticed a black light on the floor. And as quickly as I possibly could, I picked it up, I turned it on, and I ended up the wall, and it said, tell me Konami. I immediately recognized that as the, the, the Konami code, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA. I told this to Tyler, and he apologized, saying, I'm sorry, but your time is up. At this point, I was the angriest and most emotionally driven I have been throughout this entire treasure hunt. I was basically yelling at Tyler in this church, begging him to give me the clue because I had figured it out, and he just would not do it. And that's when I remembered that the first part of the binary translated into Temple Baptist Church. Yeah, it's here. I go to lunch. Turns out Connor had deciphered the binary to some degree and said that it was Temple Baptist. So he knew it was around here. Ended up going to the front of the sign where I went, and there was a little slip of a clue or a map, and it had clues on the back for the rest of it. The first part of the map said, um, it looks like you need two more pieces, find a big tree, find where an old building used to be. Um, and immediately I thought, an old building, that's where the old part of the church used to be. And so I went up, I drove up there as fast as I possibly could. I grabbed another manila folder with another piece of a map. And then I went to a big tree out in the field, one of the big trees out here. I, went up, I, I searched all of the trees, and of course the last one that I searched has the manila folder, which was the third and final piece to the map. So on one piece of the map it said, the last crusade, choose wisely, and on another it said, the last crusade again with a timestamp. 14 minutes and 37 seconds to 14 minutes and 42 seconds. I immediately recognized this as Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, mainly because of the Choose Wisely line. Knowing this information and seeing the chalice on the map, I knew immediately that I had to go there because the Last Crusade was in search of the Holy Grail. Not only that, but the timestamp led me to a certain spot in the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in which Indy quotes, X never ever marks this spot. So that's just further my confirmation that I was not to go to the X on the map, but the chalice. I'm assuming that what I'm walking into is the end of the treasure hunt. I'm hoping this is the end. As much as I have enjoyed this, this has driven me crazy. <laughs> Turns out he'd done this stuff, so I texted him. I was like, hey bro, since I helped you so much, could you possibly let up a little bit while I finish eating lunch with my mom so we can have, you know, equal opportunity? He says, no bro, I think this could be the end, sorry. No hard feelings, but I'm going. When he said that, it was like utter destruction within me. Not once do he backstab me twice. So then at this point, I was like, I have to go up there. He backstabbed me twice. I can't let him win. I find this tree, which was in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. It was a tree with a weird-looking knot on it, and there was an arrow, which looked to be pointing to a bush under the tree. As I'm walking through the woods on this random trail in Craighead Forest Park, I find this tree. It is the tree. I know it's the tree. And I, I was the most excited that, I, that I've ever been in my life because finally this treasure hunt that was driving me insane and consuming my everyday life for the last two weeks was finally going to come to an end. I was finally going to have this treasure. I was going to be able to run it in Cole, Dylan, and Jacob's faces. The three guys that, band, that had to band together just to beat one person. I was going to be able to show that I was the best. And then I walked away. About two hours had gone past since we got there. Connor was like, I have to leave. I really do this time. I was like, maybe. And he was like, I gotta go do some family stuff. So he packed up and left. And then Jacob showed up. Rise is about to poop. Then he pulled out his phone, looked on Google Maps. He said, we're actually in the right area right now, not where I was going. Literally walked straight back down the path. And on the right is the tree we're looking at. Turns out Connor had been there before, looked at it. Didn't know what to do with it. Apparently they dug around because he said that's why there's loose soil there. Ah! We 
are the champions! Woo! Congrats, call me. Well, well, we're calling him. Congratulations, you'll have to schedule a time to come pick up your prizes. Okay, so after literally like an hour of standing around at this stupid looking tree and digging and looking under whatever we thought looked like bushes and logs and everything of that nature, we have found Jack Squat. Um, so, I actually have to leave. Uh, kind of a sucky end to a really cool treasure hunt. I was really looking forward to possibly winning, and it just kind of sucks that we get out here and there's literally nothing out here. None that I can see anyway, and, I mean, I don't have a shovel to start actually digging holes. So, um, anyway, Indiana Jones once said that X never ever marks the spot, and so we didn't go to the X, but we still found absolutely zilch, but... Anyway, thanks for the treasure hunt, guys. It was a whole lot of fun. Congrats in this video to whoever has won. You, uh, you deserve it, because good God is this last clue hard. So we dug, and we found the treasure. And then that's how we won. That's how I came my kayak. That's how we found it. And just so you know, future reference, since we won, I will be helping with the next one. Be harder, so be luck with that. I stood on top of 500 something dollars for two hours and I didn't dig in the right spot. All of the deception, all of the lies, all of the broken friendships meant nothing. I had to leave for Thanksgiving festivity purposes knowing that I had failed and in doing so I had lost three really good friends of mine. I really just wanted to prove that I was the best, that I could beat the three to one odds, that I can do this on my own. And it got the better of me. My arrogance got the better of me, and I walked away. I literally walked away and gave the treasure away. <sighs> this treasure hunt was fun, but it drove me insane for two weeks. It took my friends away, it took my life away. I just can't wait till the one in spring. Place now.